Hey guys, Jay here from Whiskey Readers. It is the end of the month. It's the end of March. We are staring down April. That means it's time for us to sum up the whiskeys that I tasted in March. These are only the top 10. I'm not gonna waste your time. Well, it's not a waste of time, but I'm not gonna bore you going through every single whiskey we tried this month. But what is important to me is that we sum up uh, the 10 best. This was a heavy hitter month. We have uh, big price tags, big age statements, just really big whiskeys in general. Uh, so today we're gonna have a good time. All right, let's go ahead and get on into it. Uh, we are starting, I've got my handy list right here. What's important here is I know the top 10, but we always rank them as well. So, you know, uh, I we, we give them a score, obviously that gives you some ranking, but within those categories, this video is an opportunity for me to give you a little extra insight into what my favorite, basically, you know, ranking the best of, of how they come out. So uh, we're starting in 10th place. We have Keeper's Heart. They have a 10 year uh, release. This was done, you know, obviously everyone was preparing for St. Patrick's Day uh, big, but this is the first Keeper's Heart that was a 10 year expression. It was also the first Keeper's Heart that was basically all, you know, Irish malt. So really cool finish. It was in Malaga wine casks. I really like Malaga wine. It worked really well in the Glen Morangi that I had several years back, uh, but this was a great place to start and this had a great score from us. I love this whiskey. It was nice and velvety and had this big, rich sweetness uh, to the malt. Great spot to start off. Moving into number nine, uh, we're going up to Natterjack. Now Natterjack, I'd had their first expression last year and it was, it was pretty good. You know, it reminded me pretty much of all the same entry level Irish whiskeys you can get. But this year they released their cast strength. And this guy came in at an eye watering 63% ABV. This was the first time they've done cast strength. You know, I don't think that everything is better at higher proof, but this whiskey absolutely shown. It had so much more depth and so much more complexity. And all the flavors that I liked in the regular uh, were dialed up and presented really nicely. So it wasn't a bruiser. It wasn't kind of hitting you over the head with flavor and kind of, you know, I wouldn't say like concealing flaws with ethanol. Everything about this whiskey was turned up in a good way. Uh, at the higher proof. So this definitely cracked the top 10. Probably the most interesting Irish I'd had in a long time. And also the bottle's <laughs> really cool too. These guys have a flair for the dramatic in a very cool way. If we head on up, we have an older release, but this was the first time I had reviewed it. This is Rider's Rye uh, Gold Farb Edition. It was a partnership with Ragtime, uh, who is up in kind of New, New York. Uh, I really liked what they were doing here. They did one with Simonson as well. So basically took two different authors, had them create a rye whiskey that kind of uh, mimicked what they enjoy most about the style. Uh, they did a custom label and they released them. I will probably try the Simonson next month. I've been a little bit behind and obviously uh, those came in last year. So I'm super behind, but since it's the first time I'm trying about it, it's the first time you guys get to hear about it as well. I don't know if they're still available online, but the Writer's Ride Gold Farb Edition uh, was a really, really good time. Bumping on up, we have a short barrel, single barrel. This guy I kind of raved about in another video, um, but short barrel is doing cool things. They used to be a brand that was just a bottler, but they also just recently bought a distillation facility and all of the barrels that used to be owned by Old Fourth down in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, fun fact, I visited Old Fourth, you know, when it was still Old Fourth back in Atlanta a couple of years ago, bought some barrels there for, for a private group that I run. Uh, but it was cool to see short barrel kind of acquire Old Fourth when they were looking to get out of the market. And they've taken all of that extra inventory and use it to make really cool whiskey projects. Uh, this was one we did it as a single barrel for the Bottle of the Month Club members. So if you're interested in that, there's a link in the description. Uh, but this bottle, new glass, really cool labeling. The whiskey inside is super viscous, super rich. I love how dense and layered and like desserty it is. It's a big, bold, strong uh, bourbon with lots of flavor and lots of like this maple kind of tobacco thing going on that I absolutely adore. Uh, and so for that reason, up in the top 10, you know, Bottle of the Month doesn't always crack the top 10. And there's usually fierce competition this past month that definitely that definitely sat up there as well uh, we're kind of moving into the top of the stack here with blackened this isn't any blackened release though blackened is the whiskey project by metallica uh, this is the blackened and rabbit hole uh, collaboration i'd say they've been doing this masters of whiskey series where they take another brand or another icon of whiskey and they do a limited edition around it so this guy was finished in calvados casks and it was a kind of a collaboration between rabbit hole who's been making their own way doing really interesting stuff crazy cool releases with willet and West Henderson that used to be with Angel's Envy. Uh, but this guy, really good. It had this nice pop of like acidity and fresh fruit that really balanced out the rye spice. The bottle's cool. The price is a little high. It was about $135, but this guy's shown and it really kind of, you know, I like it when one brand gets innovative, but I love to see two brands get together and just kind of throw throw everything they know and see what they can come up with because it, it kind of reminds us that big brands can be innovative as well. And if we move up the ranks, uh, we're looking at Bricolati. <laughs> they had a 30-year-old uh, kind of a redefined whiskey 
whiskey. This is launching their new bottle shape. This is a big project, uh, but this is a big whiskey. It's big in price tag, it's big in age statement, but most importantly, Bricolati is one of my favorite producers because it's good at every age. And that doesn't mean that every Bricolati I've had is a perfect whiskey or a great whiskey or a good whiskey, but like brands like Laphroaig, I really like it at like 12 years or under, or like, 20 years and over. You know, there's there's kind of gaps of where I think the whiskey is best. Bricolati though, for me, has hit really nicely releasing young whiskeys, releasing really old whiskeys, releasing whiskeys in the teens, you know? And because they have so many different barrels and maturation types and casks, they have a lot more flexibility to make whiskey happen at all these different ages. And that's to say this 30 year was an absolute stunner. I'm kind of considering picking up a bottle. I got a sample that they sent me to taste because that's, you know, it's harder for me to get stuff that's released in the UK because I live in the US but I'm definitely considering jumping through the hoops after tasting it. Uh, it was a no-brainer to put in the top 10 for this month. Crazy good stuff. Uh, moving up, we actually have an older whiskey. This is a Teeling. It's a 33-year-old. It's their single malt, and it was finished in Pinot de Chiron. Uh, Pinot de Chiron is a kind of sweet, fortified wine made with like cognac grapes and also, you know, just like fruit must and stuff. It's really decadent. It's really sweet. It's consumed mostly as like a digestif after dinner or like kind of a dessert dram. Uh, but this whiskey was huge. It was Old. It was easily the oldest healing I've ever had. I think it's the oldest healing they've ever released and the bottle itself is just like a crazy piece of art before we even get to the whiskey inside. But this guy, I was kind of like, oh man, I've never had a healing this old. This should be fascinating. Uh, crazy, crazy good stuff. If the price tag's for you, that's a totally different question. It's easily the most expensive on the list today, but really a treat to try it. And you know, it's, sometimes it's fun because some whiskey brands release whiskeys that we're never ever going to get to try. Like those Bowmores that are like seven years old and the Aston Martin decanter like those aren't made to drink but this teeling super drinkable super lovely bumping up we have stag jr this is not the most recent stag jr this is actually batch 16. i've been going back and looking we have a fine and rare section of the whiskey readers uh website where i track like the limited editions and the lto so the limited time offerings you know kind of the, the special one-off releases that brands do or if it's something like stag jr where we know it comes out twice a year but it's really hard to get i try and taste every batch so that folks can both have a decoder for the years to figure what their batch and their proof equal, but also so people can see how these releases are changing over time. Now, I did realize that I was missing, I think, batch 16 and then the latest couple of batches. So I've gone ahead and procured all of those, but I reviewed batch 16 this month and to no surprise, it had been years since I'd had Steg Jr., but it was incredible. It's still really good stuff. It's one of those whiskeys that like, I'm probably still gonna hunt for it because it's always had a near and dear place in my heart, but it's really, uh, really strong. So batch 16, really good stuff. And next week, or I guess, next week will be the next month uh, we'll have some more stag junior for you as well as i catch up on the 2023 batches now we're kind of into the top two bernheim barrel proof a124 i'm a huge bernheim fan i've loved wheat whiskey i'd love to see it jumping onto the scene i also really love that people are finally kind of getting kind of getting wise to how good it can be this spring's release is easily the best one i've had so far i love how much texture it has and how much like structure it has without being heavily oaked you know a lot of whiskeys need a lot of oak to have structure and have complexity uh, this guy is riding the wheat train and it's full of brown sugar it's got like a big uh, nougaty sweetness and the texture for me on the palate is really what seals it it's got a gorgeous texture really nice viscosity it's very pillowy and creamy and sweet and decadent and so that leads perfectly into the most decadent whiskey of all which was red breasts 27 year old this is finished in port casks uh, this bottle recently i talked about it a little bit before it's skyrocketing in price not because it's getting hotter or harder to find but simply because the brand is making it more expensive but i did pick up a bottle it was kind of celebratory. Uh, I wanted to have one for the next couple of years to have a sip every, you know, every now and then when I have something to celebrate. And this whiskey lives up. It's really good, uh, really rich. It's got a tang to it. Like it's, it doesn't taste old and dusty. It's got like a nice composure to it. The port is just, just there enough. It's got some sweet berries. Um, and obviously that, that kind of core red breast character, which is nice to see them hold on to even after 27 years of aging. Really crazy cool bottle. It's got a crazy cool box. It's got all sorts of goods going on. And that sums up 10 best whiskeys of March, guys. We've got a lot of Irish, as we always seem to do around March because of the St. Patrick's holiday, uh, but also some bourbon. We've got some scotch. We've, we've got it all this week. So, uh, you know, let me know your thoughts. If you tried any of those, I'd love to know where they rank for you. Obviously, we will be doing this every month because this has been a hit, and it's kind of fun to look back over the past month. You know, I taste a lot of whiskey, so sometimes you can get caught in the day-to-day -day of it, and it's fun to look back and be like, oh man, like that was incredible, and I remember that. Uh, and it reminds me that this job is a privilege, and it's just a super cool industry 
industry to be a part of. So if you have any questions about the bottles, I will drop all the reviews in the description below. Uh, you guys can obviously read the full reviews up at whiskeyraiders.com if you want to check out that crazy tealing and that Perglati or the Stag or, you know, this Red Breast. Someday I'll just do a video of how to open the Red Breast box because it's just, a, it's an experience. That's, that's the best way we'll put it. It's an experience. Thanks for stopping by the channel, guys. These were the 10 best whiskeys that I tasted in March of 2024. I'll see you back in April. And obviously between then, we'll have lots of other whiskey video content as well. Been on the road with a lot of producers. We've got some cool whiskey distillery content coming up soon. And check out our new uh, creator, Whiskier, as well. I'll drop his channel. We've got a new compilation uh, that dropped from him. And you'll be seeing a bit more of him on the channel as well. So as always, guys, my name is Jay, better known as Tate for WhiskeyRaiders.com. And I'll see you in a new whiskey video soon.